kind of hard to summarize the feelings of Title IX when your entire, not just life, but like profession and what you choose to pursue on a daily basis revolves around sport. So a lot of times when we get into these awareness months or you get to a big anniversary like Title IX turning 50, you almost don't know what to say because I really don't know where I'd be without athletics in my life. And I know that's the case with so many young women. Um, and that's, I think, the impact that it does have. The fact that it can impact lives, not only for what your profession is, but then what profession it launches you into because of all the skills that athletics teaches you is just incredible. And it's something that really goes beyond words. You know, I think a big thing with Title IX, and you start to see at the university level, a lot of people talk about it with sports. Um, I think that's one of the, the big areas that you see it implemented, but the scope of this law extends so far beyond the field. It extends into the classroom. It extends into protection of individuals in their social scenes. And I think a big piece that we have to remember with this is how to use this law. We use it to advocate for athletes, but how do we use it to advocate for individuals in other realms? You know, I think we need more uh, female CEOs. I think we need more females uh, in politics. And so to me, it sets a pattern of females can do it all. They can be moms if they want. Um, they can be coaches if they want. They can be CEOs if they want. They can be a combination of those if they want. Whereas maybe 50 years ago, that, that wasn't the case. And so I think Title IX really was a springboard for uh, those opportunities to be able to pattern that, oh, this is happening in sport. Well, if it's happening in sport, why can't it happen in other parts of other people's lives? I think it is certainly instrumental and important that we have a lot more women in, in finance, in IT, in tech, you know, in all, in all branches, medicine, um, law, all those places, so that there are people out there who have had a similar experience, you know, who are there to support and to scaffold um, our rising uh, student athletes and our women that are coming into the workforce. It's, it's amazing to see the work that has already been done, but that doesn't stop, right? Just like anything we have to keep evolving. And it's been, it's been amazing to see the new things with sexual harassment and, you know, the changes that they're making as Title IX has grown and evolved. Um, will continue to impact and, and change how things are done moving forward. I think that's all part of the process, right? Is, you know, we have to create sustainable ways to change, but also we can't just stop at that. We have to be um, evolving uh, and adapting to circumstances, um, especially in our current day and age when things are very different than they were, you know, 30, 50 years ago. Having a platform to, uh, to access help when you can say, no different than Title IX, you say, I don't have a gym. You know, you can still raise your hand via Title IX and say, you know, you can't touch me that way. Um, having having a right to report, having a, a safe platform or safe place to report, um, I, I, I think that that is at its core, again, like I'm no social scientist, but, but if I understand you know, correctly. I mean, that is what it is at its at its core. Is that you you have a you have a right to report and you have a right to be protected. Um, and I don't know. I can't. I can think of no other more important thing in the educational setting um, than than that.